Okay, this lesson is going to be on explaining and simplifying imaginary numbers. <clears throat> okay, now explain imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers came up because when we were taking the square roots of numbers, we realized that the square root of a negative number wasn't possible to do. But it seemed to follow all the rules nevertheless. So they had to come up with an imaginary number system in order to solve this problem or to simplify this problem. Now imaginary numbers doesn't mean that they're not, uh, they don't exist. It just means that they're the opposite of real numbers. So if I took the square root of 50, for example, I could find a real number if that works. Remember, a real number appears on a number line. But the square root of an imaginary number, or a negative 50, doesn't appear on the x-axis or on the number line. So they had to develop two different identities in order to make this work. The first identity that you should know by heart is that the I square root of a negative 1 is going to be called I. Don't try to imagine it, just accept the fact that we're going to call this I. Whenever we see this, we're going to call it I. The other identity that you need to remember is that I squared is going to be equal to negative 1. Now that kind of flies in the face of our what we're used to with real numbers, right? Whenever you square something, you should get a positive number. But again, we're going to just suspend our um, imagination, so to speak, and just see if we can make this equal to negative 1. We're just going to accept that. So how do we simplify something like the square root of a negative 50 then? Well, the first step is usually to factor out the square root of negative 1. So I'm going to change this to the square root of 50 times the square root of negative 1. Now, what I know here, according to my identities, is that the square root of negative 1 is called i. So I'm going to rewrite that part as i, and then I'm just going to take the square root of 50 like it were just a regular problem. Now I know that the square root of 50 can be divided up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Let me just bring that i down here. I chose 50, 25 and 2 because the square root of 25 is a perfect square. So I'm going to get plus or minus 5. The square root of 2 doesn't simplify any further. And an i just comes down there. So my answer is the square root of negative 50 is equal to plus or minus 5 radical 2 i. A lot more examples to do on these. This is just the first one. Uh, but that should help you out a little bit. Remember these two identities. Okay.